I'm going to be running the meeting. Okay, so I'm going to be running the meeting. I'm going to hit got it because I know that it's being recorded. And um, the first thing we want to do is a roll call, and then I'll ask someone to be a designated timekeeper. So we'll go through the roll. Um, Lynn Anderson, you can just raise your hand or say here. Lynn is not here. Rebecca? Yes, here. Yeah, here. James or Jim? I saw that Jim joined. He did. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Square down there. Okay. Desdry? Here. And we know Allison's not here. April? Here. Uh, I'm here, Jane. Sharon? Here. Okay. Uh, Shelly? Has Shelly joined? I think she's trying to get in right now. So. Okay. And Ryan? No, Ryan. Uh, so, Shauna? Here. Okay. Um, Sue Pike? Here. Okay. And Peg? Here. And Sydney? Here. Sydney's joined. Okay. Oh, great. And Gina? Here. Okay. Great. Thank you. Um, the next thing is we could have a timekeeper to keep us on track. Anyone want to volunteer? I'll do it. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. And the next thing um, I've been asked to do is do a, a PSA for the open house. So those guests that are on physically and those that will be uh, listening to the recording after uh, this, I wanted just to say welcome to those who are joining. Um, this is the month that the, Beaverton, the city of Beaverton does an application process for uh, those who are interested in being part of their boards or commissions. And there's a link, and I think Debbie, if you can put the link in the chat, uh, people can go to the link to fill out an application or they can just go to the city website to find out uh, more about the positions that are available. Um, this is the Beaverton Arts Commission. I'm the vice chair, we have a chair. Uh, there's 15 commissioners on this uh, commission or board, and we have a three-year term. Um, and we focus on local art, uh, bringing uh, art to the community and all aspects of public art, um, grants, um, art for youth and looking at diversity um, and equity and inclusion throughout the programs that we offer. So with that, I'm gonna go through, um, I'm gonna ask the commissioners each to say who they are and uh, how many years they've been on the board or the commission and just their art modality or their art affiliation. So I'll start, my name's Jane Dahl and I'm a jewelry artist and this is my third year on the commission. Uh, so Rebecca, I'll um, ask you and if you could just say a little more about why you're on um, the commission and the impact that you've had um, to the, the community, that would be great. Okay, so this is a little beyond what you're asking everyone else yes. to do so yeah I've been on it for about eight years now and uh, I've so enjoyed it I can't tell you I think that the arts in Beaverton are just an incredibly well-kept secret is what I found I didn't realize that we had a symphony for example and we didn't I didn't know that we had a theater group and you know that there's just so many terrific things that go on there's chalk art and there's the arts mix show that comes up in the fall and there's dance and so many things that being on the commission made me so much more aware of and it's just very satisfying giving grants I, I think one of my favorite things is giving the grants to the young people and having their work honored at a city council meeting and everybody gets to see and they get a little bit of money and you know just to encourage them in, in the arts and so on and you know just bottom line I feel that the arts are our humanity and what bring us all together as a community and it's a it's a real thrill to be a part of something especially now that we've got the research coming on and it just art lives here and it's very thrilling to be a little part of it and meeting all these other great people and artists that 
do such wonderful work too. So thank you. And as <laughs> yes, thank you. As Rebecca said, I, I I tasked her with giving a little more information about the Arts Commission. So thank you for that. Um, the the rest of you, if you just want to give your name and um, your art modality and the years on the commission, that would be great. So, and I wanted to mention Shelly Fagan has joined. So Shelly, hi. Um, and let me see, and Sydney joined, okay. So I think we have everyone, has Lynn joined? Just for the, okay, so no Lynn, okay. So uh, Jim, do you wanna say who you are and how many years you've been on the commission? He look, does he look frozen? Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Barely. No. Keep talking. Jim, we'll, we'll come back because you are you do look frozen, and you yeah. might want to just ring in on the phone. Okay, Destry, you're you're up you're next. Um, I am Destry. This is my first year on the commission, and I am a painter, a writer, and a photographer. Okay, thank you. April? Hi, I'm April Rose Castillo. This is um, also my first year on the Beaverton Arts Commission. Um, I'm an art teacher, um, former art teacher, but still an art teacher. I'm not doing it right now. Um, do watercolors and photography. Thank you. Um, Sharon? So I'm Sharon. I'm a, I, I guess I've been on the same amount of time, Jane, as you. Yep. Um, three years, but I go back to the days of Janie Scott and her vision of uh, what Rebecca was referring to about a center for the city. Um, my modality is uh, fuse glass and uh, music. Um, and I'm part of a board for a nonprofit gallery in town that's been in existence since 1963. Okay, thank you. Shelly, you're up next. I am an oil painter and a pastelist. I have been on, well, let's see. I started in 2012, but and, and stopped in 2014, took two years off, and then I've been back since 2016, so. You want us to do the math? So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, let me see, Ivan, has, has Ryan joined? No, okay. I was having a lot of technical dif difficulty. Uh, the, the Zoom link was not working. Uh, I had to go through the city website, so I'm okay. guessing that others are going to be having problems as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Laura, Laura mentioned that too, but sorry about that. Um, so Shauna? Uh, I'm Shoshana Landsberg. I've been on the commission for three years as well. Um, I'm a writer and I make jewelry. Okay. Sue Pike? I'm Sue Pike, and I've been on the commission for several years. I'm sorry that I don't remember exactly when it was. I am not an artist, but I am connected with I Sing Choir, serve on that board, and um, am very involved in the community in other ways, particularly with the Beaverton Chamber. Thank you. Egg. I'm Peg Silloway. Uh, this is my first year on the commission and I am a weaver and spinner of yarn. Okay, thank you. Uh, Sydney? Hi, I'm Sydney Trimble and this is also my first year on the commission um, and I am not an artist myself, but I am an appreciator of art um, and really enjoy all modalities. So happy to be here. Okay, thank you. And Gina. I'm Gina Wilson. I've been on the commission for five years now. I'm a visual artist and I show at the Russo Lee Gallery, downtown Portland. Okay, great. Um, and so that is, those are our commissioners. Um, we're missing Lynn and Allison and Ryan. Um, 
but you've met everyone else. So hope you take an interest, those of you that are listening or uh, will listen later. And as I mentioned, you can um, go onto the city website, uh, find the link to apply or, uh, for any of the boards or commissions. Debbie, anything I'm missing that you wanna add on this PSA? I think you did a great job. Oh, thank you. Okay, then um, we'll get on with our meeting. And I think I called the meeting to order. Let's hope I did. Um, the next thing would um, be the council updates. So Laura Mitchell, our council member, give the floor to you. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. Um, I just wanted to say I'm so excited to be here. I know um, it's been a couple meetings and um, oh my gosh, so much has happened. But first I wanted to say, I was out of town um, during the night market, but I came back just in time to see all of the chalk art mm -hmm. and oh my gosh, blew me away. But I just, I can't even believe the talent that goes into that. I mean, it is just, you want to just touch it because it just seems so real. And I, and even though it was a couple days after, I mean, people were still so um, invigorated by it. You know, they felt the energy. You can tell that they were excited to be around it. So um, for all the efforts that went into that, just so excited and, and thank you for that, um, you know, supporting everybody to, to get that done. So wanted to share that. So council updates, um, our biggest update right now is our new city manager. And she is uh, just amazing. We, you know, we had a great interim manager transitioned into this wonderful, um, you know, permanent manager, uh, city manager. And so they had been working together for, for quite some time. So she's able just to arrive and hit the ground running. So just want to assure you that we have, you know, the right people at the city and uh, not, not missing a beat. You know, everybody's handing off the torch and um, getting everything done. So uh, that is really great news. And um, Let's see here. She or well, and then uh, moving on to the next thing is welcoming week. So really excited about welcoming week. That will be uh, the tenth. So in so the tenth through the nineteenth. If you go on to the city website. Um, it's like right there. You can click a link and it will take you to all the events and um, just such an exciting time and such an important period of our lives, right? I mean, really extending that welcome to people is just so impactful. So, um, you know, go check that out. And then um, another update amidst you know, this, let me just say, this update is always so um, interesting in the sense that there's so much to say and so little time. So um, the the other big thing that I think right now is that's very important, just given, you know, the place we are um, as a community is um, our shelter discussions. So, you know, we're, we're discussing amongst each other, you know, housing has always been one of our priorities. What does that look like? What is it, what is this a real, severe weather shelter look like try saying that five times fast um you know and how how do you get it um to where we can have permanent uh shelter and help people transition into housing i mean that it all works together and i think that there's a lot of great energy that's going behind it a lot of different partnerships that we're tapping into to make sure that we have the right sort resources at play and just making sure that you know we are uh, touching base with our community, talking amongst each other, just making sure that this is, uh, that we get the right um, programs and, um, you know, places in place for our city so, so we can serve. So just let you know that we're working hard for the city and um, at your pleasure, we love it. So that's, that's what's going on. Um, and, I, and I did want to apologize because I am going to have to hop off after this. Uh, piece of my house broke and um, it be it like runs up to a field and there's a lot of mice in there. And so while it's still daylight out because we were in a meeting until 11 o'clock last night uh, for council, I'm going to jam out there and try and fix it so no mice get in the house. So, oh, Well, thank you for your update, Laura, and go fix your house. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much and everybody take care. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, next is Amanda Clark. Is Amanda on? 
Hi, everyone. It's great to see many of you again, and I see some new faces, which is so exciting on the Arts Commission. Um, I was previously on the Arts Commission, but I've jumped over to the Visioning Advisory Committee, and that's why I'm joining you here today. Um, we are getting ready to do our very first survey to kind of take the temperature of what's important to people in the city, what they're starting to think about, what's on their mind. This is the first time we'll be doing the visioning again since the first time it was. So that it was done initially. So this will be our second time doing a visioning for the city of Beaverton. I'm going to put the survey link in the chat box. And we would love if you could fill that out and let us know what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what's important to you. And then also share that with everyone that you know, because we're trying to get as many voices into the mix as possible. There's a lot of work going in this year to reach voices that may have not been part of the original visioning and especially keeping up with how the city of Beaverton is changing and growing. So we're really excited about some of the new things that we're exploring this year um, in those opportunities. And um, additionally, um, we'll be using all of this information to then come up with our strategy for moving forward. The visioning is a very big project and this is just the very tiny beginning of all of the work that we'll be doing. So we really appreciate all of the input that you can give us here at the start so that we can make sure we're headed in the right direction right as we kick things off. So thank you so much. <laughs> Great. Um, and I mean, Amanda, are you taking questions or? Oh, sure. Yeah, I am happy to take any questions. Any questions for Amanda or just go to the survey and fill it out? Desiree? When was the, the first survey done? So that was done back in 2005, I believe, was when the first survey is done. So our, our city has changed a lot since yeah. then. <laughs> so it's definitely time for an update. It was very simple to get that approval through council that it is time to update the vision for the city. Great. Well, Amanda, thank you. It was so great cool. to see you again. And um, we will fill out that survey and get it back to you. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Sorry to have to rush off BCT business. <laughs> Bye. That's okay, thank you. And I know Chris is on, um, Chris Azukian, you, we have you slotted for 10 minutes to give us research updates. Hi, thank you, Jenny. Hi, everybody. Great to see you, um, lovely people. It's been a while. Um, so things are going really well. Uh, you might be watching the research from the outside, and maybe things aren't changing so much uh, from the outside, although work has started on the plaza. You might notice um, the fence line is changing, uh, but there's lots of work happening on the inside. If I have a couple of minutes at the end, I will show you some photos, which you know I love to do. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I'm gonna pare down the planning into separate buckets here, like I usually like to do. And then of course, please pepper me with questions. I always love your questions. Um, uh, of course, we're keeping a very close eye on the Delta variant uh, since I last saw you as the rest of the, all of the world is. Um, we are lucky in the sense that there are many other performing arts venues uh, going before us this fall. But uh, suffice it to say that at the very least right now, we will require vaccinations when we open, open in March um, and also check for vaccinations, which has become, which has really become a standard in the industry, um, not just here, but everywhere. Um, and so we'll also require it for employment, for artists performing inside the theater, as well as all volunteers. So there's a lot of questions around the logistics of that, especially when it comes to renters that are renting the center. How do you enforce that? And, and uh, um, lots of different things, but know that we're headed in that direction. We're really um, committed to that. Um, we are still aiming for an opening in early March of 2022. There are uh, a few things that are moving targets right now. One of them, believe it or not, are our seats, our audience seating, uh, which is uh, a slightly delayed uh, to be manufactured and arrive here. Uh, we're looking at an arrival here sometime in October. Um, and then we're hoping to move into the venue sometime in December. Um, so, and then open up in March. That might shift. I feel like I'm always telling you things might shift, <laughs> manage, manage expectations, but um, just the nature of the beast. And, and um, 
seats are always an issue. I've, every project I've heard of have been on like final seating install is always uh, takes longer than anticipated. Um, and then uh, capital campaign wise, technically the capital campaign to build the research has wrapped up, but gifts have still come in in the last month or so. Lonnie Faith, uh, who is now officially our director of donor engagement on my team. Uh, luck, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy that she's continuing with us. She's actually on a sabbatical right now after the campaign. She's going to come back in October. Um, but we are well above goal, uh, over $1 million above goal. And that says a lot about this community. So we've raised $12.2 million instead of 11.2. All of that money will go towards construction of, uh, because of added costs here and there uh, throughout the project. Um, staffing wise, lots of exciting news to share there. Uh, we have, in addition to myself, and you might have heard or met Cleo Knickerbocker, who's my assistant. We also have uh, Julie Bunker, our director of uh, production and operations. She started in April. I may have told you about her already. Um, we also have had, since I last saw you, uh, join two staff members, uh, Director of Marketing and Patron Services. Her name is December Carson. She comes to us from the Northwest Film Center at Portland Art Museum, and then before that um, at, the, at Portland Five. Um, and then Vanessa Martin, who comes to us uh, from, um, from Artist Repertory Theater. She's our Director of Finance and Administration. Um, very talented individuals, and I got to say, I'm, I, I'm getting really excited by all the amazing people we're attracting to this project, and it just breeds new life in me, be, building this amazing team, and it's really heartwarming. Um, we all want to work with people smarter than us, and and that's exactly what's happening. And so we're building a wonderful team. We have two positions. One is posted right now. One is uh, the one posted right now is box office manager. Uh, we've just um, confirmed our ticketing system. If any of you know that world, it's called Tessitura. It's the gold standard. Uh, uh, Oregon Symphony uses them, Oregon Shakespeare Festival, uh, Artist Rep, Portland Center Stage. It's a database for ticketing as well as donor tracking and patron uh, experience tracking. It's, it's the gold standard in the country, in the world actually. And so uh, we're hiring a box office manager to help us implement it. Uh, that'll happen. It's a big ordeal. It's gonna take about three or four months to actually bring that system online. Um, and so we will, our goal is to launch with ticket sales and our first events in mid-December for March. Um, so that's about the time we'll announce uh, the first bits of programming in our presenting series and our rentals as well. Um, uh, you will, I'll tell you more next time, but you will see more and more uh, an awareness campaign, a marketing awareness campaign building around the research brand itself. In the next couple of weeks, we'll launch the research.org, which is the website destination website for the center. Um, you you have seen the Center for the Arts campaign.org, which is the campaign website, but there's a there's a, a separate brand that is the research brand, Patricia Research Center for the Arts, that will launch soon. So I will, of course, email you so you can see it and uh, play around with the website once it's launched. Um, other than that, um, let's see. I'm um, we're doing a catering. Uh, we're at the tail end of a catering RFP right now. The, the center will have. A list, a short list of preferred caterers um, for meetings and events, uh, with a variety of price points for people to uh, engage, in. Uh, and that's only for things like receptions and sit-down events and and um, uh, gala events and things like that. Uh, we're still free to use; it's a non-exclusive agreement. We're still free to use any restaurant locally for uh, staff meals and backstage catering. So we specifically carved that out. Um, what the catering shortlist does is that it makes sure that we have a few top-notch caterers in the building that help us promote the business in the building and really have ownership over the building and helping us drive uh, events there, uh, non-art events, if you will, you know, meetings and events. Um, so, um, yeah, there's a lot of internal stuff happening, financial controls, all that stuff, but um, I'll leave it at that. Um, 
Any questions I can answer, please have questions. I love your questions. Yes, Gina. Uh, um, Chris, I thought you said that there were two job openings. Oh, yes, thank yeah. you. Perfect. Uh, one is uh, box office manager. The other is event manager. And that is a, will be posted in the next week. Event manager's job is really interfacing uh, and handholding clients from beginning to end uh, to execute events, uh, primarily catered events, uh, but a variety of events. They'll be working on Julie Bunker's team, our director of production. Um, and then um, there's, there's gonna be a few more positions uh, posted uh, later this year, early next year. Gina, I'm so sorry, I missed your opening. I was out of town. <laughs> That's okay, it's up the whole month, so. <laughs> I'll stop by, definitely. That'd be great. So some of the things I, I was gonna, oh, sorry, Rebecca, let me just say this and I'll get to you in a second. Um, okay. What, uh, you know, you might wonder what you can do to help, right? I know you all are eager to help. One thing is uh, there will be volunteer opportunities at the center. And that'll be announced in January, February. So everything from ushering to special projects uh, to docents in the gallery. Uh, the other thing is um, rentals of the center. If you think of groups or people that uh, would like to rent the center, I'm constantly meeting with people about that. Um, so please refer them to me. Um, and it doesn't have to be a specific kind of rental. I just I just spoke with the organization Apano about hosting their gala. At, at our center, which is great. I can't wait. Um, I spoke with a Hawaiian organization about bringing some artists through to perform Hawaiian, authentic Hawaiian music, touring artists, as well as their gala. So, uh, you know, nothing's off the table. Yes, Rebecca. Yeah. Um, I understand that there has been a new gallery director hired. Yes, uh, gallery yes. coordinator, uh, you know her, Karen. Um, Karen De Benedetti is our gallery coordinator. She's a she, It's a part-time position. It's a contract position, as it often is um, in these types of centers. And so she's. Uh, I actually met her at an arts commission meeting two years ago, and we started talking. She coordinates the gallery at Multnomah Arts Center, or she does work at Multnomah Arts Center, and then uh, Hillsboro, the Walter Center. So uh, we talked a lot and uh, about the the program and all of that now she as of last month she is uh officially engaged we are starting to plan the first show which rebecca you introduced mm. me to joe cantrell many years right. ago yes. and it's coming to fruition um, yes so that is a uh, show about salilo falls uh about indigenous um peoples in our area and uh we're looking at planning that show the idea with the gallery is it will have four to five shows to start um, and then grow from there. And they'll be primarily focused on Northwest artists and then also um, some touring shows as well. Uh, we will have a process for people who want to submit for shows and things like that. That's still in process. I'm working with Karen on that and we'll announce that. Um, the first iteration of the website yeah. you'll see will be quite basic, but then there'll be more things announced later this fall. Cool, great, thank you. I'm trying can to go fast. The, I'm so sorry, can I just get the name of the gallery coordinator again? Yeah, Karen De Benedetti. You want to just put it in the chat, Chris? Yep, I just did it. Very good. I think Very she's good. spelled it. Okay. Um, do I have two minutes to show you uh, some photos? Yes, please no? do. That's We're fine. ahead of time, so you're great. Okay, yeah. okay great. Uh, let me... Okay, do you still, let's see, you still see my uh, PowerPoint? Yes. Full screen, great. Yep. Um, so here's a night shot. Actually, I was driving by a few weeks ago and this was a, not a momentous occasion, but it turned out it was the first time the lobby was lit. So mm. there's this beautiful night shot that's catching up. I feel like it's catching up with the renderings. It looks almost exactly one, like one of the early renderings. Here's the inside as it stands as of, Two weeks ago or a week and a half or so ago two weeks um it's really come a long way all the wood is in inside here's a wide nice. shot of uh from the balcony 
So you can see, really see the intimate circular nature of it. Here's the lobby. It looks in some ways almost complete, uh, although it's not, of course, it's gonna be polished and all that, but the handrails are in. This is the Beaver Dam theme. Uh, you can see the slats on the wall that are in. Uh, it's really, it's this, this spot right here on the second floor, beautiful spot to look out. Uh, and then um, also this will be a great stand-up reception spot as well for, for audience members before shows. This is the room called the lab. Uh, large room divisible into two high ceilings, variety of uses, uh, including educational initiatives, classes, um, community events, um, corporate events, um, uh, even small performances. So you can see the lights are in, the ceiling's pretty much done. The wood is gonna go in next on the floor. It's a beautiful wood floor. Oh, this is the last shot. I didn't know this was in here actually. This is a <laughs> different presentation, but this is me with the founders of Whitebird Dance. That's Wally uh, on the left and Paul on the right and Graham in the middle. This was our, we've had many conversations, but after their tour, we just sat down and started discussing, uh, putting some uh, ideas around uh, some shows in the future. So Whitebird will have a presence at the center and we're looking at what that will be over time. And I'm really happy about that because the more we can bring in um, presenters into the center that can draw audiences to the center, uh, the better, the better for all. That's all. Great. Excellent. Thank you so much, Chris. This is amazing. And we're, we've all been part of it from the start with you and uh, it's just so fulfilling and exciting. So thank you for taking the time to present to us today. Of course, uh, th thank you very much. Please reach out with questions. Great to see you all. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye. Um, before we go on to public comment, I, I want to apologize for the link not working, but we, Shelly, just for roll call, Shelly's joined, Jim joined, and Lynn has joined. Um, has anyone seen Ryan join yet? No, okay. And, uh, yeah, and Allison. So there's just two missing, Allison and Ryan. So for roll call purposes, thank you. Hopefully it was okay for me to do that. Um, public comment. I know we have, uh, oh gosh, something just popped up on my screen. I know we have Razier on for public comment. So um, Razier, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, so hi everybody, so many familiar faces. Um, I just want to do a quick shout out for some of the things that we're doing at Tualatin Valley Create, things that are, so you're aware of what's going on, things that we need your help broadcasting, and something I want to plant in your mind for next year. Um, first, I want to welcome Jane. She is now our newest staff member, and she's our program manager, so she's going to be in charge of the workshops and the networking events, so you'll see her name across some of our email blasts. Um, she's also working with uh, and overseeing our Creative Impact Series. So that's my next highlight is that the Creative Impact Series is a partnership that we do with the City of Hillsborough and the Beaverton Arts Program um, each fall. And it includes multiple workshops, but we do it as a partnership because it all benefits all of us as organizations so we can actually reach a broader audience. And then we experiment a lot with the topics. So our first, um, the first workshop in the series is tomorrow and it's Washington County Arts and Culture Grant Panel for Individuals. So um, Hillsborough manages this workshop and they're bringing in different funders who help fund individual artist projects. So I highly recommend it for any of your own projects or other artists that you know. And I shared the link in the chat so you can see all of those workshops within that Creative Impact Series as well. And um, they go between tomorrow and I believe April or May of next year. So there's lots of things to sign up for. Uh, the other thing I want to share is Tualatin Valley Creates is now the fiscal sponsor for the Cultural Coalition of Washington County. And if you guys are familiar with the Cultural Coalition of Washington County, they are a funding body here in Washington County. They redistribute Oregon Cultural Trust dollars to our local arts, heritage, and humanities um, entities. Their grant cycle opens next Monday. It'll be open from Monday, September 13th through 11.59 p.m. October 18th. 
So if you know anybody else who's also looking for small grant funding, it's between 1,000 and 5,000. There's three different levels. Um, the guidelines should be on the website by now, but the application portal opens on Monday. The CCWC is also looking for board members. So if any of you happen to be terming off of your Arts Commission duties with the City of Beaverton, it's a great way to stay involved um, and to actually impact a little bit of everybody across the county. And the CCWC board terms are three years. Uh, they try to keep the meetings about four to six meetings a year, and really their mission is to get money into the hands of organizations working here to make Washington County a more um, inspiring place to live. I shared the link um, with that one in the chat as well. Um, and then I also want to announce that we have a volunteer, his name is Rob Rupio, and um, he has been committing about 10 hours a week to Tualatin Valley Creates, working on youth initiatives. Uh, I'm excited to report that we are launching what we're calling the Creative Youth Co Collaborative, which is going to be a youth almost advisory body, but really an action body. Um, we're looking for up to 20 youth representatives from schools across Washington County who uh, kind of work through a leadership skill building one to two year cohort and they get to be in charge of their own strategies for their cohort. They get to create their own collateral. Um, one of the perks is they get to create their own t-shirt designs uh, and then really come up with how, how we identify the gaps in our community and how they can help make systemic change to answer those gaps. So after about four months of doing community research and community conversation, <clears throat> um, we're excited to launch that program. So you'll see more communique on that. Um, and then finally, I want to plant a seed in your mind that the um, Tualatin Valley Creates is now on contract with the Americans for the Arts to do the next uh, Arts and Economic Prosperity Study. So I don't know if anybody in here was part of the last research study. Um, it's about a two-year study where we survey our entire county um, from arts patrons and consumers of the arts uh, to the arts producers, so the theater houses, um, it's all about the way that the economy works, the creative economy here in Washington County. And the importance of that data is so that we, as Tualatin Valley Creates, as your advocate to the county commissioners, to our regional partners, and to our state representatives, we are talking about how important the arts industry is for our community, for our residents, and for our businesses. So we're going to activate, we're going to call on councils and commissions across the entire county. So that includes Beaverton, Hillsborough, Sherwood, Tualatin, Tigard. Um, I just heard that Wilsonville is in, yeah. And so we're going to need some help with that. We need some manpower, but we'll arm you with all the, the survey information that you can handle. And really it's just going out, going to the theater and talking to other patrons, um, going to the galleries and asking questions. Um, and, and so we'll kind of make that really tangible, but we will need some manpower help. So I want to plant that seed in your mind now, uh, because we'll be coming back in the spring and next summer, um, needing to mobilize our friends on the arts councils and arts commission. So I'm available, I'll put my contact information in the chat so I don't steal up too much more of your time, but I'm always available to answer questions and you can always reach uh, Tualatin Valley Creates on our website at tvcreates.org. Thank you guys. Thank you, Razier. Before you leave, um, I didn't know if it was appropriate for me to put my TVC hat on to plug two more things. Um, I Debbie, think it's good. Is it okay? Okay. Thank you. Um, and Razia, if you could, uh, I know you have the links in the chat already, but two things that, well, three things that are coming up um, that one of them we need your help on. We are launching a teen portfolio uh, review, uh, two-part workshop series, part of the Creative Impact Series. Um, two Saturdays, one, the first one is September 18th. It's a two hour uh, workshop where teens ages 15 through 19 can bring their work. And we have four amazing artists in four different modalities from theater, music, um, by illustration and science and art um, that are going to be working with these teens to give them to critique their work and then the teens can enhance their work and then we'll see them again in April to uh, again go over you know their portfolio so it's an amazing opportunity for teens and um, Razé's put the link in the chat but they can sign up through Eventbrite and it's a free workshop for teens. So if you can get that out there for us. And then I just want to do a shout out to both Sharon and Rebecca, 
who are going to be hosting two of our upcoming networking sessions. Um, let me see, Sharon is gonna be doing the September one um, with uh, Debbie and they both um, are part of the Village Gallery of Arts. Did I get that name right, Sharon? And um, uh, Rebecca is going to be doing our October networking event um, and uh, sharing her expertise in digital photography. So thank you both um, for agreeing to do that. So I just wanted to do those two plugs. So thank you. Anything else from anyone? I don't type that fast. Um, who's doing um, September? Uh, Sharon Dunham. Sharon, got it. And what was the focus of that one? And Debbie, um, Debbie was not Debbie Thompson, it's Debbie Teeter, <laughs> just for clarification. Thank you. And that one is, uh, we're calling it Emerging Artists. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and a real plug, if you guys haven't been to one of TVC's networking events, these are great ways to meet other artists from all over the community. Um, bring your business cards. If it's via Zoom, you know, be ready to put your contact information in the chat because a lot of collaborations happen for these networking events. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you. Okay, on to board business items. And let me see if I can do this appropriately. Um, Debbie posted the minutes from July and um, has everyone had a chance to read them or do you need a few minutes? I'm going to take that as um, that you've already read them and do you have any um, comments or edits? Okay, if you all in favor of, uh, what is it? Who, who wants to approve the minutes? I, I, move, yeah, we, I move for approval of the minutes as written. Okay. Sharon, thank you. And who would like to second them? I'll second it. Rebecca, thank you. Okay, all in favor of approving the minutes, say, raise your hand or say aye, just raise your hand. Okay, all opposed? Raise your hand. Okay. Um, the, I was the gonna of, ab abstain because I wasn't there. I mean, is that what we should do? Because I can't, I don't know. <laughs> yes, no, no one abstained, right? She's abstaining if you're not there. Yeah. If you're not here. I wasn't no there, so I don't know if they're correct or not, right? Oh, I guess I never had, I never have been asked that question before. Uh, do you abstain if you were not at the meeting? Are we seeing some yeses? Yeah, I think that's you, part of the rules. Okay. So it looks like 11 ayes, one abstention, no nays. I should abstain too. I wasn't there either. Okay. Change so, those numbers. Okay. Thank well, so you, if, Sharon. Yeah, it's a no vote. So it doesn't, it's abstaining. It's like you didn't vote. So it's the same thing. Oh, okay. Oh, no, it's not. There's, there's, you either vote I, nay, or abstain. Okay. So well, for, someone uh, who's not, for someone who's not present, it doesn't count at all. It's not, there's no, there's not a vote. That's just an abstention. That's an abstention. Okay, fine. Okay. So, uh, so the count is no nays. Uh, how many eyes was it? Sharon, did you count? Uh, was it? A, it's nine and two abstentions. Nine and two abstentions. Okay. April, I'll have do you to have all that? As well. So I wasn't there. Shell, you weren't there either. Okay. Three abstentions. Nope. We were having twins. <laughs> <laughs> so what's that? Eight and three? Eight, three. Yes. Eight and three. Okay. Thank you. It's like looking at soccer scores. I, I think we're going to have to have a timekeeper and a mathematician. How we have to do the next scorekeeper. <laughs> It's for yes. Okay, so we approved the minutes. Um, do we have to approve anything else? I don't think so. Uh, well, this will be a, a hilarious recording when we when we look at look back at it. Um, staff liaison updates. Debbie Thompson, you take it away. All right, here I go. Just a sec while I <laughs> figure this out. 
All right. Okay, so they want me to talk about COVID and um, I'll put some links. I'll put the Washington County COVID link and the city info and resources COVID links in when I get done talking, but um, they're basically saying help us mitigate the COVID-19 surge, uh, that we're witnessing dramatic increases in local COVID-19 cases as hospitalizations in Washington County and throughout the state soar due to the Delta variant. The latest data and projections show continued escalations, which are expected to further strain our healthcare providers, medical facilities, and other resources. Um, so they're just saying, you know, it's about vaccines, um, that the, the best defense against the COVID-19 uh, virus and its variants is to get a vaccine and I'll be putting in vaccine information that uh, you can start with on the Washington County website. And um, there's a phone number too that I'll put in for anyone that needs language assistance. And then testing uh, anyone experiencing symptoms, contact the Washington County website, which I will put in the comments chat. Um, Mass, they're saying statewide mask requirements are in effect for everyone in Oregon, five and older. Masks are required in most outdoor public spaces where six feet of distance cannot be maintained and in all indoor public spaces. Uh, dis distancing and safety using that six foot spread of distance, maintaining that when you, when you need to. Uh, regarding events and outdoor gatherings, limit gatherings outdoors with people outside of your household and avoid crowds, especially where people are unmasked. And again, I will be putting those links in. And it says, remember, face coverings are required when visiting all city buildings, including for visitors at both library locations. Okay, um, and then Amanda already shared about the visioning um, survey, and that's one thing they wanted me to talk about here, but she already shared and sent you the, and put a link in there. So in case you forgot, she did put a link in there for that. Okay, three times she said. Pardon? I think she said she put it in three times. Yes, yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, special, there's a special election and fall voters forum happening. It says that the runoff election for the Beaverton City Council position one is on Thursday, September, Tuesday, sorry, September 21st. You can hear from the candidates running during the fall voters forum. The Beaverton Committee for Community Involvement, BCCI, will host the live virtual event on Thursday, September 9 at 7 p.m. And I'll be putting this information in the chat for you guys. The event can be viewed online and there's an address. It's basically beavertonoregon.gov slash voters forum, forward slash voters forum. Or you can watch it on Tual Tualatin Valley Community Television or TVC TV on channels 13 for English and 28 for Spanish. And again, that's on September 9th. That's a Thursday, September 9th at 7 p.m. So that's tomorrow. So this is happening tomorrow, just to give you some perspective. I just gave myself that perspective. <laughs> I'm like, wait, this is September 8th. Um, okay, attendees are encouraged to ask candidates questions in advance to be featured during the event. So if you go to the Voters Forum website there, you can ask questions in advance. The deadline for, for oh, sorry, I shouldn't even have mentioned that. The deadline is passed. It was last Thursday on September, 12, on September 2nd. Voters will need to mail their signed ballots no later than Wednesday, September 15. So that's coming up to mail them in. After that date, voters will need to drop them off uh, in the ballot, official ballot boxes. 
and I'm not sure what time those close, but you can look at, I'm going to be sending you, well, there's a ballot drop off sites location, locations that you can find at county, Washington, OR, US elections, but I'll put that in the chat here in a second when I'm done. Okay, uh, that's it. Do you guys have any questions? Yeah, Sharon. Um, a, a couple of things. One is um, you mentioned TBC TV. Uh, channel 28 is the Spanish channel. It's not channel 13, it's channel 30 for English for TBC TV. Oh, did I say 13? That's okay. I, I just wanted oh, to clarify. So, I have 30. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm one 30. of the timekeepers, so I actually get to tell uh, the two candidates when to stop talking. <laughs> and um, so tomorrow night in council chambers, there will be both Ashley and Jerome. Um, I would encourage you to watch. Um, this is going to be a very important runoff from the special election uh, perspective. And so between seven and eight, either watch it live, DVR it, um, whatever, but um, get your ballots in, please. This is incredibly important. Um, and yes, and the, I've seen the questions and they are pretty amazing. That's fantastic. Thank you. And Rebecca, did you have a question? Um, yeah, I just wanted to um, touch a little bit, Deb, on the arts program and what's going on there. You know, there's, uh, you know, Beth is gone now. And when does Laura start? Okay, yeah, I'd like, I'd love to give that update. Yes, Beth is gone. Laura starts on sep Monday, September 27th. Oh, that's great. Yeah, okay. and I think it's an exciting time for the arts program. Uh, number one, well, for many reasons, but one of them is there's no more mayor's ball. So the arts program just gained, I mean, I'm a full, I've been a full-time staff person with the arts program for 14, over 14 years. And the whole entire time I've done it, I've always worked on the mayor's ball, which <laughs> is a solid six months of the year. And add another month at least uh, combine the six months leading up to the six months before. So it's it's really almost like adding another halftime person to the arts program. So that's really exciting. And we're working on our mission, vision, values, which we worked on with Beth. And then when Laura comes on, we'll finalize those with her input. And I think that um, this is really an exciting time and opportunity for the arts program to take it to the next level, really be um, strategic about what we're doing. And um, we've been talking a lot about what that means. So more to come. And uh, Courtney and I are very excited to have Laura back. And every staff member I've spoken to is really excited. And I've been in touch with Laura. Well, I've been, I've maintained a relationship with her um, even while she was gone, but uh, we're super excited to have her back. Yeah, she, she had some great initiatives when she was here before. She's very creative. And, and yes. I know speaking okay. as a commissioner, I, I think we're all excited that she's yeah. coming back. So great. looking forward to it because it's, uh, like you say, it's an exciting time with the research coming on and just, you know, the opportunity to maybe come up with some new events to replace the mayor's ball and, you know, just, and hopefully get back into doing our 10 tiny dances and different things. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say anything about BAM? Oh yeah, um, BAM is happening uh, from October 1st through the 17th. And it's virtual again. And we're working right now with the judges to to for all of the for the awards the best in show the jurors choice the mayor's pick and the staff's pick and um we should be you should be you should start seeing some marketing pieces going out here pretty soon uh, it's kind of ramping up especially once we announce the winners and uh we did the show for a whole month last year and we got reports every single day. We could see all kinds of information about how many hits, where these people were hitting from, uh, how, how much time they spent on the website, how many 
pages they looked at, things like that. And we really did an analysis. And the first two weeks were great. And then it just went boom. You know, it's kind of like why we changed the art show from two weeks to four mm-hmm. days. <laughs> we end with the same amount of people coming in four yeah. days as opposed to two weeks. So, right. you know, work smarter, not harder, I guess, is the lesson here. And so we're doing our best and I'm glad we can even offer a show, but uh, we'll see what happens in the future. Yeah, great. Thank you. Debbie, are you able to share with me the the people who got in because I have a, a newsletter deadline that's coming up in two days. And if anybody from Village Gallery, I can match who you've got with Village Gallery members. It's a, it's a kudos section to people in the gallery. Okay. Awesome. Um, so you want a list of the names of the artists that got in. You want to see if those, any of them are part of your gallery. Correct. Like, okay. Phyllis, like Phyllis Meyer. And yeah. And me. Okay. I got it. And Rebecca, you did? Yay, oh, Rebecca. Awesome. Yeah. For I, all four that I submitted. Oh, good. Yeah. Awesome. I got in too. Wow. wow. Sharon, congratulations. Rebecca yeah. and Sharon. Congratulations. Before mine got accepted too. And okay, okay. my gosh. Right. Well, congratulations. But I, I really don't want to, you know, it's really a sensitive thing when you put something out in the newsletter for a gallery and if you miss somebody, you feel really mm-hmm. rotten. Yeah. So I don't want to miss anybody. So I will, I'll match it up with our membership list. Yeah. Yep. Great. As long as that's all you're doing with the list, Sharon, that's it. I feel comfortable sharing that with you. And if, if you want to uh, have me send you what I'm going to submit, I'd be happy to do that. Okay. okay. That'd be great. great. And congratulations to you all. That's great news. Yes. Congratulations. Yeah. everyone. I've been so busy. I don't even know everyone that got in. It's kind of a blur <laughs> right now. Okay, well, um, Debbie, thank you. Oh, Desri, did you have a? Yeah, I had. I had just one question. Um, I'm, and I don't. If this isn't the appropriate time to ask, we can talk offline. Um, I'm, I'm just curious as, as an alternate, as far as going from an alternate to not an alternate, is there anything specific I should be doing application wise, or do you know, do you know what I should be doing in the meantime? That's a really good question. Can I get back to you on that? Absolutely, that's totally fine, yeah. I, yes, I would love to do a little research on that and give you a really good answer. Perfect, mm-hmm. sounds good. I'll email you as well, I just wanted to check. Yes, yeah, email me, Dustry. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Any other questions for Debbie? I just have a quick question. I know that I, it was announced earlier, but Laura, who's gonna be the liaison, what's your last name? It's Becker, B-E, B as in boy, E-C-K-E-R. And you said she's coming back. So she worked for the city of Beaverton in the arts before? She, yeah, she right. was the manager before Beth. Okay. And she was with us, I think it was about a year and a half, two years, I can't remember. Okay. All right, great, thanks. You bet. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Are there any, su- we're moving on to subcommittee report backs. Um, have any of the subcommittees met and it, do any of them want to give a report? Um, public art? I can't see anyone. So if you're raising no, your hand. No, we, we no. have not met. We, okay. There's nothing to report. Okay. We, we were busy with uh, the chalk festival. Yes, I, I feel it. <laughs> uh, grants and diversity, equity and inclusion. We did not meet. We did not meet. That is correct. Uh, how about youth programs? I know Allison's on that one, isn't she? Um, she hadn't met with us, but it was Ryan and Jim and myself. Okay. Um, we had an initial meeting and then we have not met since. Okay. Thank you for those uh, updates. Okay, um, Desdri, I, I think you're always going to be the timekeeper because we are so, I am going to go to the beach. I am headed to the beach and thank you all for keeping the time. It was um, so really hard work, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see, uh, agenda items for next meeting. Anyone? Uh, I guess 
people can think on it and send them to me. I think that it seems like the uh, subcommittees need to uh, kind of get back in the game <laughs> and uh, make a plan for when they're going to meet again and kind of start kicking that back up again. Of course, I think some of that has to do with Laura too. And I, I was going to say, yeah. yeah. So um, we'll do a, a welcome for Laura and yeah. Okay. Um, the, uh, I think I have to do me meeting reminders before I adjourn, so I'm just going to do it. Uh, next meeting, October 13th, please mark your calendars, 6.30 to 8. Um, and any last comments, concerns? Were we going to try to meet before the next meeting or wait? For, for, the, sub for the subcommittees. For the subcommittees. Yeah. So try to meet, but the subcommittees try to meet before our next regularly scheduled meeting. I think that would be a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> and then we can give Laura update. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Who, who is the chair of public art? I am. Oh, Kelly, Kelly I want to talk to you later. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'm going to adjourn if no one else has anything. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha, Jane. <laughs> Thank you. Don't. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Right. Have a great Thank night. Thank you. Bye, Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Debbie.